All right, everybody, welcome back. This is Justin's Book Review. Today, we're going to talk about book number 152 for me. That is Keith Law's Smart Baseball. I'm, I'm doing this live on YouTube, but I think it's an easier way to upload it. But anyway, um, Keith Law's Smart Baseball is a book that I got for Christmas for my wife. Um, it's a, comes in in about 275 pages. You can see beautiful picture but don't judge a book by its cover we all know that okay um it's hardcover good looking book um keith law to start off with is a bit of a controversial figure he's an espn senior analyst um that works for the bristol connecticut company and you know he has a lot of very um interesting takes on baseball and he interacts with a lot of people on Twitter who may not feel the same way he does or don't have the same knowledge as he does. And a lot of people end up getting blocked by him on Twitter, which I, I think my brother might be blocked by him. But um, needless to say, though, the guy uh, put worked for the Toronto Blue Jays, um, was one of the first guys to get into um, sabermetrics, analytics in the front office, I'll say. Um, and he has a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the new way of looking at baseball uh baseball statistics how we analyze it uh analyze what happened and how we project what's going to happen in the future so i went into this book um with a pretty i would say beginner's level knowledge of sabermetrics advanced stats um growing up i always loved uh numbers stats I think it's one of the reasons why baseball is my favorite sport. I fell in love with, you know, the numbers on the back of baseball cards, averages, just doing, you know, when I played baseball, getting my average after every at bat and doing it in my head and just ERA and everything. It's just so cool how baseball is made up of numbers and it really can explain a discrete thing that happens. Um, so Keith Law kind of takes time in this book to kind of go over how baseball has always been thought about in terms of how we evaluate players as far as batting average, you know, RBIs, home runs, pitching, you're going to go win-loss record, you're going to go ERA, and saves. Um, and he lays out a very clear, concise um, book about why some of those things that we value so highly are really pointless and don't really have a place um, in a front office, in a fan's discussion about how good players are. So, for example, um, batting average is, it's not the worst stat in the world, but he uh, Keith explains that on base percentage would be a better judge of a hitter's ability to do their number one goal, which is not get an out. To not get an out, um, that would be measured by on base percentage because it also takes into account walks. Um, and then also slugging percentage is another good measure of a player's value. And you put those two together on base and slugging, you get OPS, which is used a lot of time now. It's a number that I like to use. Um, it's still not a perfect number. And Keith introduced us to OPS plus and weighted on base um, average WOBA and runs created and pro win probability added. All this stuff sounds very challenging to people who don't really like numbers or can't understand it. But if you really read this book, it really is easy to understand in my opinion. I mean, I, I do know a little bit more math than a lot of people, but I don't think you need to be uh, have a degree in math to understand what old Keith is talking about here. And then on the pitching side, you know, I grew up... Um, a Phillies fan, and they weren't very good in the 90s, and I'd get very frustrated when I would, um, when my starting pitcher would have a good game, Kurt Schilling or whoever was pitching, Randy Wolf, and would get, wouldn't get would get the win, because I thought that for my guys to make the all-star team and to have a good season, they need to have a good win-loss record, and I thought that in my head, I said, something's wrong with that, it's not it's not right, and and Keith absolutely says it's the it's the dumbest thing ever, it's, it's, the pitcher doesn't will their team to win um, on offense, can't control what the, their defense does. So, you know, he talks about what numbers we need to look at in terms of a pitcher and his efficiency. And, 
you know, ERA is ERA's a good number. It, it's not perfect. You know, a lot of people look at WHIP, which is a good number, but, you know, ERA, uh, comparing ERAs to the average for the year and adjusting it for what ballpark you're playing in and um, fielding independent pitching, which takes out all the plays that are hit to fielders and just looks at uh, the home runs you give up, the things that pitchers can control, home runs, bases on balls, strikeouts, and puts a number together for the effectiveness of each pitcher. And oftentimes it lines up with how good that pitcher is. And you, you, you really um, you take out the noises, he says. Uh, takes out you know fielding and uh, poor defense or good defense. You're really able to narrow in on how good the pitcher is. And, you know, so, uh, and he talks about fielding, which might be the least interesting um, thing that he mentions in this book. But, like I said, very easy to understand, very easy to read. Um, pretty good. If you love baseball, it's a page turner, I'd say. So, all in all, I think he did a good job. I think his goal was to um, inform people. Keith did just that. Uh, you know, so when people get on fights in fights with him on Twitter... If you read his book, you, you kind of understand where he's coming from as far as the way he evaluates some of the numbers and things like that. And, um, but anyway, I guess maybe Keith maybe sometimes could be a little bit nicer on Twitter, but that's okay. Uh, I recommend the book to all baseball fans. Seriously, even if you don't even like Sabermetrics, it's a new way of looking at uh, an old game. And a game that I love, I'm a, I'm a diehard, and I love the history of the game. I love the old school I love the no DH rule, and I love looking at old players in the Hall of Fame, but you got to stay relevant, and you got to understand how these GMs are kind of viewing our sport now, and this is um, kind of breaks it down on a molecular level for everybody. So I'm going to give this five out of five stars. I think it was very well done, and I recommend it to anybody. Um, all right. Anyway, got seven minutes here. So I'm, go I'm going over, but I tend to do that when I'm talking about baseball. I could just talk probably for another half an hour. My next book that I'm going to be reading, I got this for Christmas as well. Killers of the Flower Moon, about the Osage. I know it's an Indian tribe. The Osage murders and the birth of the FBI. Uh, looking forward to reading this guy here. So... Hope you'll join me probably in about two or three weeks when I finish that one. Um, but besides that, happy reading. Please read a book. Put the phone down. Pick up a book. Let's learn something today. Thanks. And live. And.